So here we have the Seat of Life, which is a remarkably ancient uh, pattern and shape. We have no idea the true origin of this kind of geometry, but it basically goes back as far as time, the beginning of time itself, because this is basically the very fabric of existence geometrically in a 2D form so we can better understand it. But anyway, the Seed of Life creates all of the platonic solids. And as of right now, you can see the hexagon, which also creates a 3D cube, if you can see that. But the hexagon is made up of six equilateral triangles. The inner angle of the equilateral triangles is 60. The inner angle of the hexagon is 120. And the outer angle of the hexagon is 240. Now, there's a curious thing that we can do with these numbers. For example, if we take 240 and multiply it by the amount of corners of the hexagon, we get 240 degrees times 6 equals 1,000 440, which is how many minutes are in 24 hours. So we could put minutes right here. Now the inner angles have another interesting coincidence. If we take the inner angle of the equilateral triangle, which is this angle here, and multiply it by the inner angle of the hexagon, which is 60 times 120, we get 7,200. If we take 7,200 and multiply it by 12, we get 86,400, which is how many seconds are in 24 hours. Our planet rotates on its axis at every 15 degrees per hour or 463.8 meters per second at its equator. Now we gotta talk about the meter. So the first time the meter shows up historically is in 1640. A bunch of philosophers and scientists were coming up with a way, a better way of dividing up time and, and creating a measurement system. And they were using a pendulum, specifically Marin Mersenne is the one who came up with this system, to where if you took a one meter long pendulum and swung it, that would give you one second of time with each swing. However, he observed that swinging the pendulum at a more shallow angle creates a more accurate measurement in the long run because then it's not wiggling around. Also, the pendulum he was using was 0 0.994 meters long to our modern meter, so he was really freaking close. If you pull the pendulum out to 15 degrees from rest and release it, it gives you a very accurate one second of time. One, two, three, four. And the maximum angle the pendulum will travel is 30 degrees. This geometry is also found throughout every normal face clock on Earth. The angle between each hour equals 30 degrees. Now the truly remarkable thing about this shape is that the length, the distance the pendulum travels equals an Egyptian royal cubit. So if we were to make the face of this clock one meter in radius, that means there are 12 Egyptian royal cubits surrounding the circumference. Do the math, guys. I know you can. The meter was defined again in the late 1700s and used as a standard during the time of Napoleon when the French measured from the pole of the planet down to its equator and divided that by 10 million. One ten millionth of that distance equals one meter. It's just curious to me that what are the chances? What are the chances that the, all this lines up so perfectly that this geometry produces this shape, produces these angles and numbers, that then also gives us the day cycle of our planet. Like the very rotation of the planet is right here in this simple form. And on top of that, the very shape and size of the planet is also connected to this because this is also has to deal with like the gravity. The gravity is just perfect to make this work out. You can't do this on Mars, not with this length. There's also a whole lot more geometry going on in this shape, guys. It's, it gets so much more complicated than this. This is just basic stuff. I don't know. It just really makes you freaking wonder if there's something bigger going on. I believe there's an argument to be had that the meter, this length, has been known far longer than we give it credit for, and that the ancients, people probably who built the pyramids, in fact, I believe the people who built the pyramids knew this length and were using it as their measurement, because here it is being connected directly to their system, and I believe it to be undeniable that the builders and architects of the Great Pyramid knew way more about this planet than we give them credit for.